Hey guys, it's Veronica, and oh my god, it's really hot right now. I am sweating so much. I'm back with another video. Uh, I know it's been like a hot minute, but I was traveling. I went back to America to visit my family and my grandparents, and I was going flying all over the place. I did upload a video while I was over there, but ugh, I just did not have any like downtime. I didn't have any privacy because I was like staying in my family's home so yeah it was just not really like a good time for me to film. I don't know if I mentioned this but I haven't ever told anybody that I even do this like nobody knows. I just told my mom like a little bit like I said hey mom I do YouTube and she's like about what? And I'm like nothing really but nobody else knows my sister doesn't know none of my friends know even my friends that do YouTube I haven't told them I feel like I'm not that good enough like cuz I'm still a work in progress I still like there's so much that I can improve on anyways I'm rambling so this video is going to be about reverse culture shock of when I went back to the States after living in Korea for two years. And I'm kind of just going off the top of my head. I meant to make notes and like be professional, but you know, I'm a piece of garbage, so it's what you get. In case you didn't know, I've been living in South Korea for two years now. Before that, I lived in the United States for like 23 years. But you know, after you live in a foreign country, you have to adapt to the culture and just try your best to fit in. And there are gonna be some things about culture that will shock you sometimes in a good way sometimes in a bad way that are kind of opposite or different from the culture in your home country I've gotten used to a lot of things here that I didn't realize I had like internalized and then when I went back home I was like oh I'm like used to Korean stuff now that's weird so let's get into it the first one that stood out to me was Food. Obviously, there's Korean food and American food. That's not what I'm talking about. A lot of people who are not from America complain that American food is like too salty. Now, I love salty food and I thought that like there was nothing that could be too salty for me and I had made this long list of all these foods that I wanted to eat when I got back and on the top of that list was Del Taco. I wanted to get a chicken burrito from Del Taco and that used to be like my go-to meal. So I got that. That was my very first meal back in the States right after I landed. I asked my dad, Dad, please can you drive through? I'm hungry. I need something to eat right now. So I was shocked because I used to love that meal but when I ate it again after two years, it was like so freaking salty. I was just like, this isn't good. It's not good. I was like really surprised that I didn't like that. But that was the only thing that that happened to. All the other foods that I had on my list that I wanted to eat were not too salty for me. So maybe Del Taco was having a bad day, or I don't know, or maybe it was saltier than I remember. But yeah, that was like way too salty. And the other thing that shocked me, also with Del Taco, was the size of the drinks. I just know as a fact that America's sizes are bigger than other countries. I knew that. Bef long ago, many moons ago, I knew that. In Korea, the sizes of the food, like french fries or drinks at a fast food restaurant, they are proportionate to the name of the size. So if you order a small, it's small. That actually did shock me when I first moved to Korea. I was like, a small is like actually small and I've gotten used to that portion size but when I went back I ordered small drink small fry the fries were small enough and I was like okay that's a small fry but the drink was like taller than my head I thought they gave me a large or an extra large and like I shouted into the drive through window I was like excuse me is this a small and they're like yeah that's a small I was like, well, what is a large then and they have this like big plastic bucket a bucket as the size large. That is just, I don't know, America, I guess. The second thing that shocked me was the restroom stall. You know, I've been using public restrooms in America for my whole life. I never thought anything of it. When I moved to South Korea, I also didn't think that much about it, but the doors in the bathroom usually go all the way to the floor 
and the gaps between the doors are pretty small so I it is like a high level of privacy in the restroom as it should be honestly and then when I went to a public restroom in the United States I think I was like in an airport the bottom of the door is like up to my freaking knees I think somebody's gonna be able to just like peer right into my cooch and then the gaps on the side of the door are like I don't know you can stick your fist through it I'm exaggerating of course but it just felt really wide to me because I'm now accustomed to very private restroom stalls usually when people make cultural comparisons or like comparisons between countries you don't want to say that one is better than the other but in this case I can honestly 100% with confidence say that restroom stalls in Korea are better than American restroom stalls because nobody should be able to just tilt their head and either look through the gap door or look on the door and be able to see me and all my business when I'm trying to do business on the toilet. Another thing that I wasn't expecting at all, and this is kind of a more serious topic, was like feeling nervous or stressed about the situation with North Korea. A lot of people were worried about me when I first moved to Korea because they're like, oh my god, you're so close to North Korea, they're crazy, they got nuclear weapons, like what if they decide to kill everybody? I'm like, well, I mean, they're gonna kill me there, they, they got bombs now that can hit California, so what's the difference? And a lot of people are like, oh, be safe, be safe, take care of yourself. What am I... How do I be safe against a nuclear bomb exactly? There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do about it. You just have to go about your life and just move on. You can only really worry about it when that kind of stuff goes down. Most Korean people, and I can't speak for everybody, do exactly that. They just go about their day. They don't stress over it because they've been hearing North Korea give threats like this like their whole life and they never follow through. To them, it's just like, yeah, and what? So when you are here, it is pretty calm. There's no like people like whispering about the news. Like, have you heard about this? Like, oh my god, what if this happens? Like, people don't talk about it like that. People talk about it a little bit more now these days because Trump is like so aggressive about it. When I was in America though, I was like, should I be worried? Like, I was a little bit nervous because everybody there is talking about it like all the time. It's on the news all the time. It's, people are posting about it on Facebook every day. And like people are actually like scared for their cells, for their lives. They're like, are we gonna about to be in World War III? I don't know. So yeah, I was like really stressed about it there. And I had never felt that stress for two whole years living here. Never. So now that I'm back, I actually feel relaxed again. Seeing people go about their daily lives not talking about this stuff is like, oh, what was I freaking out about? One last thing. This was not really a culture shock because, I don't know, it's not culturally related. But in South Korea, well in Seoul particularly, there's really amazing public transportation. You can get anywhere without a car or a bike or a skateboard. Like just by subway and the bus and walking, you can get anywhere in Seoul. Anywhere. Which is so convenient. In the States, now I'm from LA, which is world famous for traffic. There's not amazing public transportation. I hear it's getting better, but it's really not at this level yet. Not to like disparage LA. It's a great city. Mm. But while I was back, I had the opportunity to borrow my mom's car. Thanks, mom. Like, she's not watching this. <laughs> I got to borrow my mom's car and drive again for the first time in two years. And I felt so crazy driving. It was like I had forgotten how to drive, but like I hadn't forgotten how to drive. My body remembered, but I in my brain was like freaking out about it the whole time. My body was just like, yeah, you can drive. What are you talking? What are you freaking out about? You, can, you know how to drive. So I had like no problem getting around driving. I thought I was going to like have a really hard time. Like, oh my God, what if I can't make a left turn? What if like, and I forget to like signal what if I get a ticket or what if I, I don't know I don't know I was like freaking out for no reason it ended up being totally fine the only thing that I had a little trouble with was parking and I've never been that good at it anyway so what's the difference yeah so after that I realized like oh I still remember how to drive so I'm kind of thinking about getting my international license so that I can drive over here and take a few trips hmm I can't really think of anything else that was like a big huge culture shock <laughs> Hey guys, it's Veronica, and I'm editing right now, and I realized that I left out two really important points. 
of a re like reverse culture shock that I had. I can't believe I forgot. So excuse me for looking really janky right now because I'm in my PJs. Don't be alarmed. So yeah, I'm here editing and I'm in my PJs. I already had dinner and it's about 10 o'clock now. And I'm editing this and I can't believe I didn't talk about two really important things. But I'm going to keep it really short because this video is already getting longer than I want it to be. And I'm not even done editing. So the first one was that people respect the line in the States. So if you're standing in a long line waiting, people don't really cut in line. Whereas in Korea, I get cut in line on, it feels like a daily basis. Usually by older people like ajumas, ajushis, and whatnot. So it's kind of like excusable, but also like wait in line, please. So that's one thing. The other one was that like cashiers and waiters and waitresses in America are like so friendly. Like it scared me a little bit. I'm so used to it kind of just being like business here. Like it's not that deep. Like not that people are rude in Korea. It's not that by any means. It's just like just oh, here's your thing have a nice day it's not like oh my god are you having a wonderful day isn't it it's like so beautiful today like oh my god can i get you anything it's so much it's not it's just i'm not used to it anymore so that was kind of a shock and eventually it was very pleasant i did enjoy it for a little bit but i don't really mind either way so yeah just those two things. I want to slump this into the middle of the video. And we're going to keep going and wrap it up. Hmm. I can't really think of anything else that was like a big, huge culture shock. I actually was shocked at how comfortable I felt being back in America. I've heard some people say that like once they go back to their home country, they feel really overwhelmed because they're able to hear and understand everybody's conversations around them. That did not happen to me. I didn't feel overwhelmed at all. I don't know if it's because I watch a lot of like American TV shows still or I hang around with English speakers a lot. I don't know. I didn't feel shocked hearing English all the time. That's interesting. I thought I'd just share that. So yeah, that's everything that I can think of right now off the top of my head that I was like reverse culture shocked about. Um, I don't know if even some of these count as reverse culture shock. If you have any questions about culture shock or reverse culture shock or you want to hear a different video about culture shock when I first came to Korea, let me know. Leave a comment. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe or if you hated this video, you can dislike too. That's fine. And I will see you next time. Bye.